so so welcome to worship this morning and so we're beginning with music recorded this is uh what a friend we have in jesus and it's arranged by bill cross So I invite you to gather in God's presence across distance. In this sacred and holy space, we are connected to God and through community, 
through the spirit. And so we gather to worship and serve those of us who are here in Yorkton. We gather to worship and serve on the Treaty 4 territory, which is the traditional home of the Cree, Anishinaabe, and Métis peoples. And so we give thanks for their stewardship of this land and seek ways of sharing the land with respect for all creation. We live into the hope of healing relationships. We begin with words from scripture to remind us of God's presence and allow us to settle into this time and place. And so I'm going to invite Paula to read. And just give us a minute, Paula, we'll get your picture and your mic turned on. I think you can go ahead, I think, Paula. When clouds are full, they empty rain on the earth, whether a tree falls to the south or to the north. In the place where the tree falls, there it will lie. Whoever observes the wind will not sh show, and whoever regards the clouds will not reap. Just as you do not know how, to, how the breath comes to the bones in the mother's wombs, so you do not know the work of God who makes everything. Thank you, Paula. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so I light the Christ candle, reminding us of God's presence with us, across distance, reminding us of Christ's light in the world, Jesus who is always with and within us. Amen. And so I invite us as we gather in this place, in this time, to take a few moments to breathe together, to allow ourselves to be present and centered. And so we remember that breath and spirit and wind all share the same roots in the Hebrew and Greek. And so when we breathe, we breathe in God's spirit. We breathe that spirit into ourselves. And when we breathe out, we breathe that spirit back into the world. So I invite you to settle into some silence and breathe in God's breath, God's spirit within you and breathe that breath into the world. Know that you are loved. In God's breath, we find rest and peace. In God's breath, we are loved. Come, be. So we're going to sing. This is a healer of our every ill. It's in Voices United. It's 619 if you happen to have your hymn book handy. I am going to put the words on the screen or Roland will. Um, so that those who are watching online will be able to see. And we're going to leave the mics turned off so you can just um, sing along or listen quietly. Give us peace, we are down with fear. 
And so we hear words from scripture, and Mrs. Martin is going to read for us today. So just give us a minute to get your mic and your video on, Martin. I assume I'm on. You are now. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Martin. Ezekiel 37, 1 through 14. The hand of Yahweh was on me. And he brought me out in the spirit of Yahweh and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. He caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and behold, they were very dry. He said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? I answered, Lord Yahweh, will you know? Again, he said to me, prophesy over these bones and tell them, you dry bones, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus said the Lord Yahweh to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and bring up flesh on you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am Yahweh. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, an earthquake, and the bones came together, bone on its bone. I saw, and behold, there were sinews on them. Flesh came up, and skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and tell the wind. Thus says the Lord Yahweh, Come from the four winds, breath, and breathe into these slain, and they may, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood up on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are clean, cut off. Therefore, prophesy and tell them, thus says the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I will open your graves and cause them to come up out of your graves, my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. You shall know that I am Yahweh when I have opened your graves and caused you to come up out of your graves, my people. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land and you shall know that I, Yahweh, have spoken it and performed it, says Yahweh. I think that concludes the reading. Thank you, Martin. So that passage that Martin read has lots of images in it. And I want you to just imagine the scene for a moment. Imagine the landscape that is bare and dry. There is no living thing as far as the eye can see. And imagine standing at the top of the valley and looking out and seeing nothing but bones in the valley. You might wonder where all the bones came from. Was it a battlefield or a massacre? Was it a plague that killed an entire city? Was it simply a graveyard from many generations that had flooded and the bones rose to the top? Where was God when all these bones were living human beings? Why didn't God prevent these thousands of deaths? As you stand and look at those valley, that valley of bones, you might be overcome with a sense of despair and hopelessness. What's the purpose of living if we're all going to end up like these bones anyway? The emotions can be almost overwhelming, perhaps. And as you stand and look at that valley, 
Maybe the wind picks up a bit, and a voice on the, whis vo voice on the wind whispers, can these bones live? Who knows? I don't know. And then the voice on the wind is giving words to speak. Words with the power to recreate what seems dead and gone. As you speak, the bones are no longer bones, but whole bodies. Still dead, but whole. Were the words that the wind gave you enough to recreate life? It seems not. And once more, the wind invites you to speak. The wind invites you to prophesy to the breath, to the wind. The words flow through you and back to the wind. Come, breath of wind, breathe on these bodies. Give them life. What was dry and dead, no longer bones, no longer just bodies, but life-filled beings. That desolate valley is transformed into a valley filled with life, movement, color. The same place that brought despair and hopelessness a few moments ago might now bring gratitude, celebration, hope, possibilities. Now that we've seen the valley transformed from death to life, we can begin to think about what it means for us. At this moment in time, we can quite literally see the bodies piling up around, around the world. We might ask, what is the meaning of all this death? We might ask, where is God? We might ask why God is allowing all the suffering. We might even ask if perhaps God is punishing the world for sin. But I don't think we should see death, even widespread death, as God's punishment. Death is a normal part of life. Some people live long, healthy lives. Some people die very young. Some people try, die tragically of violence accidents and illness. Death is a reality in our lives. The question here is not why people die, it's just a fact of life. The real question is, what do we do when faced with the reality of death? What do we do when life becomes struggle and challenge? This story from Ezekiel draws out the reality that even when we think there is no life, no hope, no possibility. The Spirit's breath is still at work. It highlights the Spirit's ability to renew the earth and renew humanity as a whole. The story isn't intended to be read as a little literal resurrection of the dead, but as a way of inviting us to experience new life in the world. It invites us to imagine God renewing the face of the earth. We are followers of Jesus. We are people of death and resurrection. We are coming closer to Good Friday, the death of Jesus, and Easter morning, the resurrection. And this story that we heard today highlights that pattern. Death does not have the last word in our lives or in the world. There is nothing that the spirit can't work with. For many of us at this time, there is uncertainty, anxiety, isolation, a sense of helplessness, maybe even despair and hopelessness. We will live with the reality of this pandemic for the foreseeable future. But the scripture invites us to allow the spirit to breathe life into the world, to breathe life even into our lives, even in the midst of crisis. And as crisis passes, the world will be renewed and our lives will be renewed. 
tangan. And we're going to sing, this is Tree of Life, and it's in Voices United 121, if you have your hymn book. The words are going to be on the screen, but we are going to sing uh, the Lenten verses. So those are the ones that are down at the bottom of the page. So 121. And so I invite you into a time of offering. We often talk about stewardship in the very broadest sense of the word, which includes our time, our energy, as well as our money. And we often imply these other things. But the physical action of placing money in the offering envelopes and into the offering plate on Sunday morning means that these, the other gifts are sometimes devalued or not noticed as much. And so today we are going to share offerings with each other which highlight these gifts. What gift of time, talent, energy has God placed within you to share with family, friends, community, and the world? How are you being called to respond to those in need in our own community and around the world? Now, for those of you who are online, if you know how to use your chat box, um, I would invite you to type some of those gifts into that box. You can share some of your thoughts about what you have to offer. And we'll gather those gifts in the silence for a few moments.
So recognizing that this is a difficult time for many people. If you feel moved and able, you're invited to continue to financially support the Ministry of St. Andrews by going on our website or signing up for PAR. You can still mail checks and drop them in the uh, mail slot here at the church as well. And so we hold all of those gifts together. And we, we're going to sing together. This is Lord, listen to your children praying. We're going to do it multiple times and it will become a chant that becomes part of our prayer. So if you are looking at your hymn book, it's 400 in Voices United. And so we enter into a time of prayer. And as I said last week, um, if you have prayers during the week that you would like to have held specifically, I invite you to share those with me by phone or by email. Um, and I want to thank Bonnie for sending me an email this week. And uh, so I've included some of her prayers in this as well. I was able to incorporate some of those um, into this prayer that we offer together. So let us pray. God of life, God of death, God of life. We offer our prayers for the world today. We pray for all of those who are living with death as a reality. We pray for families and communities, communities devastated by the deaths of loved ones. We pray for people who are currently living with the coronavirus. We pray for our own families and communities, for safety, for compassion, that people will do what they need to to be safe and to keep others safe. We give thanks for the many people who continue to work in order that the rest of us may live. We give thanks for truck drivers, grocery store workers, all of those working to support us, making sure we have food, water, garbage pickup, and lights on. We pray for all of those who are self-isolating and under quarantine. We give thanks for the people who care for them by running errands and checking in. We pray for those who are finding it difficult to cope with life now, right now. We think especially of all of those living with mental illness or addiction. We pray for those who are now out of work, wondering what's next, how to pay rent and put food on the table. We pray for those who have relied on support in the community that has now disappeared. Holy One, as we see what's happening in the world, may we place our hope and our trust in you, not as a magic fix-it, 
but as a source of strength, love, compassion, and hope. We place our trust in your ability to renew the face of the earth and our lives. We give thanks and celebrate all of those moments when we glimpse your presence and are encouraged. May we be instruments of love and compassion in a world that is suffering. And so we gather these prayers and many others that have been held in the silence of our hearts and minds. And we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So I just want to offer a few announcements of things that are still kind of happening in the next few days, in the next week. So Bible study is happening in the same format on Wednesdays at 10. And so it's on Zoom. So if you want to join Bible study, you just join the same way you did this morning. All the information is the same. And also on Friday mornings at 1030, uh, I'm offering a children's story time and conversation. And so any of our young folks can join me 1030. Again, it's on Zoom in the same way. And... Uh, Again, as I said earlier, if you have prayers that you want to share, I would invite you to send them to me. And uh, if they're ones that can be incorporated, I'll incorporate them. And if they're ones that you just want to be held privately, I can do that as well. And so we will be here again next week at the same time. And so you'll be able to come back again next week for worship. We're going to sing one more hymn. This is a hymn that was written especially for this time that we're in. Uh, so it's brand new. And uh, it was written by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette. And uh, the tune will be familiar to you. So if you can see the screen, you'll be able to have the words in front of you. And if you're listening on the phone, uh, you just get to listen to this new hymn that we have enjoyed. that we can't imagine yet when the closeness we have suffered loved ones as we quit community may we look God in this season for a whole new to be Jesus face the lonely desert as a time to look within. There he met such trial and conflict, there he knew you were with him. To time of separation, when we miss the life we know, may we Cherish those around us as we never have before. May we think much less the prophet. May we learn what matters more. There on people suffering. May we say our neighbor's prayer. May we learn new.
And so as we leave our time of worship, we live in a hope of a world renewed by God's breath. And we're going to be having Shani play. This is called a medley of spiritual songs. And uh, at the end, we're just going to listen to Shani play. And then after she's done playing, we'll be turning uh, the video and the sound on. And so you can stay and visit for a few minutes if you like. And so we go in peace. Amen. Amen. 